Can you believe it? I'm looking for my lighter. It's right in front of me the whole time. What's it's been a day? What's up, historians? Welcome back to another great episode. Historically Haunted Vodcast. Wah, season three, episode whatever the fuck. Brought to you by actor Donnie, trucker Donnie Green, who drove the red truck at Pet Cemetery and his trucking agency with his wife, Bauer Green Logistics Trucking. And John Green. Uh, logistics company as well. Appreciate you guys. Great episode, brother. Dylan ain't even started yet, you fucking guy. <laughs> Great episode. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's like one second in. Um, so yeah, and also special guest this week, or special, I'm sorry, special uh, sponsor of the week this week is John Curie at uh, the New Era Paranormal Investigators podcast. He's a member of the New Era, New Era Paranormal Investigators. He's the leader. And he's also a co-host of the New Era Paranormal Investigators podcast. Bring it down a notch. Um, yeah, it's been a day for these. You can follow me on Facebook. You guys know I almost fucking got cream today. My car spun out. Uh, where I live in Maine, a couple towns underneath me was just rain. But where I live in Maine, I got about fucking like four inches of snow in like a minute. Literally, I've never seen anything like it. Like snow was just dropping the size of hockey pucks down. And it got onto the road real quick. And my car spun out. And, of course, I feel you know I was in an accident a couple years ago. I died for a little bit in the accident, got brought back to life. Um, I got a little bit anxious, a little bit of anxiety. I was stuck on the side of the road in Sebec, Maine. You guys ever heard of Sebec? S-E-B-E-C, Maine. Population 840. You probably never heard of that. Um, so then, finally, when a plow truck went by, a uh, Maine state plow truck, I get to go in back of the plow truck. So as soon as I pull back in the plow truck, I'm just fucking white-knuckling it, praying to get to work on time. Let me get up on the hill, and there's a sheriff there blocking traffic with DOT and stuff. And uh, turns out there was a head-on collision, and a young couple and their two dogs passed away. Um, they were involved in it, and I was about a minute behind them. So I could have been involved in that. I had to make my way back home. It's been a day. So, you know, hold, hold the ones you love close. Everybody's like, you don't have to go on tonight because my guest did cancel. A shout-out to her, uh, Jacqueline, from Yank Yankees Betty Creations. I got one of her things up here. But, um, Yeah. Anyway, so I'm glad you guys are here. Fucking, I'm glad I'm here. I thank you for all the love. I wrote on Facebook. And um, yes, Betsy, I appreciate you. George, what's up, George? Hey, hey, Ariel, what's going on, lady friend? What's up, Carol? What's going on? Hi, everyone checking in. Uh, I am a ghost hunter. Well, you're in the right place. This is for historians, ghost hunters, and fucking wackadoos. So you're in the right place. Um, so yeah, man, uh, I had a close call today. Um, I had a little flashback of, of when I was in the car accident and... Uh, I took a nice long nap, got myself a nice burger for supper, um, and I, I got a beer and a joint, and I'm talking to you guys. So it's going to be an hour just shooting the shit with me. So thanks, Brandon, dude. I appreciate you, Brandon. You're always sending stars, bro. You sent me a lot of stars. You support the show so much. You guys want to be like Brandon, send me some stars. Show me you appreciate me. It doesn't cost a lot. Brandon's a good dude. He helped me load up Annabelle at the Warren Convention, and we've been tight ever since. He's going to come on the show. I might even send you the link later, Brandon, once I stop talking. <laughs> have you come on and I'll share the link. So I'm glad you're okay. Thanks about that, man. Yeah. I, it was fucking scary, dude. Um, I can handle the snow. Good. I'm a main boy. I've been here my whole life, but this stuff is just, it literally left my house and it was tar. It was like light snow. I get about 20 minutes into my 40 minute, uh, 35 minute ride. And it's like, it's, it's like, I'm in a fucking snow globe. I'm like, what? My car is just spinning. And there was a lot of accidents today. It wasn't just me that was being a pussy in my car. That sucks. There's a lot of people, like I said, these poor family, this poor young couple and their two dogs leaving the house to go get breakfast or whatever. And they never made it home. And uh, I don't want to cry because that sucks. <laughs> so this shows for them. I uh, was close to them, not close to them, but I was right behind their accident today. I could have been a part of it. If I actually get traction, I could have been a part of it. So um, I pray that your spirits carried on safely, the dogs and the humans, and, and hopefully they're all together in, I pray for their families that it's rough, man. Every day's rough. Make sure you be, you know, be safe. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so shout out to Dustin Grammer. Um, if you guys don't know, I am a booking agent. Yes, it is horrible for the families. That's the thing I think about is they leave the house and they tell their family, hey, talk to you later. And then they leave and they never come back. And it's because of the fucking conditions. And it's like no one, it's like they were sick and dying, which still sucks. My mom died in the hospital, all that stuff. But, and, but this is like, I mean, that was obviously horrible too. That wasn't expected. It's not like she was dying of cancer. But anyway, man, I don't know what I'm, I'm it's been a day. So um, Dustin Grammer. I am a booking agent. I know I don't seem professional, but I actually am a, an agent. I actually am 
the Donnie Green is my client, as well as Stacey Johnson, who played Pennywise in certain scenes in the It remake of uh, Stephen King's It. So I have some people. Dustin Grammer is a, well, he's he's a cryptozoology type of dude. He's also a filmmaker. He made a movie called um, Steeds, S-T-E-E-D-S, Steeds Ridge. And that is on, I believe, Tubi and a couple of things. Heather and I watched it. And he sent me some stuff today. I got it in the mail. Dustin, appreciate the shirt, brother. Monster Media. Moonlight Monster Media, baby. I got that. Some nice stickers from him. What else did he send me? He got me a pin and a coffee mug, dude. My clients send me gifts. And there's no better way for me to promote you than get some stuff. And I don't even really ask for it. And they just sent it to me. Ask for my address. So I appreciate the gifts. Also, uh, also too, um, Rosalie sent me every single since 1985 until 87. Every single copy of Stephen King's. Uh, newsletter. He didn't write it. It's dedicated to him, and it is written in Bangor, but it's Castle Rock, the Stephen King newsletter. I got every single... These go for $16 to $18 a piece on eBay. Not, not, that's no bullshit. And I got every issue. I got to start reading them. Very, very cool. Love the freebies. Love the free gifts. Um, it's like Heather says, I love free shit. I won't pass it up. So, Yeah, Keith Johnson's good people. I've met Keith. Very cool. Um, Heather's got a link for us here. What link is that? I'm not quite sure what link that is, guys, but check that. That's the Monster Media link on Facebook. Follow them, like them, and the whole nine. So, as you guys know, my guest canceled. I have some good guests coming up in the future. I don't want to spoil anything. But if you guys want to ask me any questions, like usually it's, I do talk a lot, but it's usually based on my, my guests. Of course, you guys don't ask me enough questions. I didn't just get this gig because I'm a fucking senator's son or a rich man. I earned it. I did that by paranormal investigating, by exploring, by researching, by documenting. So you guys want to know anything of the stuff that I've been to, anything that I've done, feel free to hit me up and ask me. I'm going to show you my YouTube channel in a minute and we'll go over some videos of places I've been. Um, so, yeah, I got about six people watching. We had 11 at the beginning. Maybe me swearing drop people off. Whatever, man. This is what the show's about. If you guys don't like it, that's fine. There's other stick-up-the-ass podcasts where people just talk. And, and that's not this, man. I smoke weed. I drink beer. I swear. Put the kids away. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't be watching this anyway. You shouldn't be watching this. So This is me. This is why I'm sponsored by an actor in a Stephen King film. This is why he pays me money. Because I'm just me. I don't need to be fake. All these other podcasts that don't even have sponsors. I'm not trying to diss people, but I've seen people just giving people shit lately about things. And people, are, and if people are talking shit about me, please tell me. Don't be telling other people. Don't be hiding it on Facebook and little groups and little private little sessions. Go ahead and let me know what you think about me. Go ahead. I really would appreciate it. And I'll do you the favor. So for those of you that think I'm cool and like me, this is fucking me. Brandon, you know what's up? I met you one time. We've been brothers ever since. Man, you always supporting the podcast, always jumping on. And I appreciate you. Ariel, I met you at the Warren Con. So, you know, Dylan, again, chance to meet you, but I want to meet you soon, brother. Um, but you're also a client of mine, too. Guys, check out Dylan at the Reckless Paranormal. That's a group on Facebook, and it's a it's a, a paranormal team that he, he runs. Yup. <laughs> Brandon, I'm giving you the link. You're coming on, brother. Not, not right this second, but I'll give you the link soon. Stick on there. Give me about 20 minutes or so. And uh, we're going to have you come on and shoot the shit and talk about Warren Con. Okay, yes. Next up, so I've been doing this YouTube channel. I don't edit. I don't compare photos. It's very draw. It's very dry. A lot of times it's my first time there. So, yeah, you're coming on. Stay tuned, brother. Um, so let me share this because I don't have – I have some subscribers, but I think there's some good shit on here. What do you guys think? Let me know. Is that my Facebook? No, that's my YouTube. Okay. So only 328 subscribers. That's a problem. Go to YouTube. Fucking subscribe. Now check out the places you can check out. Movie filming sites, Haunted Connecticut, Atlas Obscura sites, Iowa Haunted sites, Virginia Haunted. Where do you want to start? You want to start here? You want to go to a tombstone house? You guys ever been to a house made out of 30,000 Union soldiers tombstones? I did. And I fucking found it because I, I know how to research things. I'm not just in this because I'm a pretty face. I know that's hard to believe. Uh, um, but, uh, my wife is low. Check this out. Um, slate from the this house is made out of tombstones. Those are union soldier tombstones. 
Really? Oh, and, you're awesome. Thank you. It's like you know me. <laughs> She's just touching the walkway, the, the fireplace, owner. the outside, um, not that even so the much. fireplace the on the side. The house, if you, um, if you look, these were Civil War tombstone. These were stone heads. Phew, I'm overwhelmed. The girl says it's haunted by <laughs> sure. the white man downstairs um, that the fire. From Union soldiers. And a black man upstairs that watches her sleep. And the cemetery so. they were in lost money, so they That's decided cool. to cut the gravestones in half. Leave the headstone part that oh, says the person's the name and all that. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, it's not my first rodeo, but yeah, please check that out. Um, I got a lot more on there too. I don't know why it's not behaving right now. How do I get back? That's the question I want to know. I don't know how I get back. There's no way to. Oh, there it is. Okay, so <laughs> this is also, like I said, there's this big pyramid there. There's uh, Union, I'm sorry, Hollywood Cemetery. Four. And they got a giant pyramid with like, I think, 100 or and, 50, and women. You ready? Four soldiers underneath it. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. <laughs> I've never seen a pyramid, especially in the. That's a tombstone <laughs> at a cemetery. I mean, in Egypt, so I've just never seen pyramids. I mean, it's astonishing to see it from the road. Oh, actually hear the video? Usually people say they can't hear the video. That's why I'm talking. But if you can hear it, I would have let it play. Fuck. Well, that's cool. Well, there's the link to that. Guys, please subscribe, man. I, I, I see these yahoos out there doing food eating challenges and stupid shit. They got like thousands of subscribers. And I got like 300. And I put my soul into these videos. I got a lot more ones, too. I've been to the movie filming sites. We're dropping off. People are dropping off. I thought for sure I'd be entertaining by myself. I guess not. What's up, Alexis? Alexis Aaron from Candles by Alexis. You can hear the video. Well, that's yeah, usually people can't. That's why I, I talk during it. That's bizarre. All right. Well, all the all the phonies logged off. We went from 13 people to two. So I don't know if it's just Heather or fucking. I really don't care at this point. Whatever, man. They all tune in to say hi, and then they all leave because they got better stuff to do. Give me a break, dude. Like, you guys tune into a podcast. People come in. They say hi where they're from, and then they literally do that just to log off and leave. They don't even spend the rest of the time supporting or hanging out. They just come on because they want to be name-dropped, and that's what I do. I come on, and I tell everybody what people are from and all that shit, and that's going to fucking end because you're not using my platform for your two seconds of fame, so... Hammer, Heather Kimnady, he's getting an eviction notice soon. <laughs> Who's who? Me? Oh, the baby, baby watch. That's right, Alexis. Yeah, you were due pregnant on my show two weeks ago, a week ago, for God's sake. He's gonna be coming out. I'm glad you're tuning in. I appreciate it. you're always one to support. You messaged me earlier, asked me how I was doing after my day with the car and everything in the snow. So I appreciate that. You're like family to us. Meeting you in Salem um, at the Salem convention thing. Really cool. Really cool. So, yeah, I guess I'll just, like I said, there's not a lot of people watching. Fuck them. So I'll just keep talking or I'll just share my YouTube. Let me get back on the YouTube thing here. If you guys watch and want to share this video, the way people will know it's on. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Oh, we got six people watching now. That's good. I thought me being by myself would be a shoe in but all right. Well, all right. If I play this video, I really wonder if you're going to be able to hear it. Because every time I play a YouTube video on the show, no one can hear it. So let me see. Hold on one second. I'm going to get ready. All right. So Heather said I played a video earlier. Okay, let me know if you can hear this fucking thing. Because I played videos on here and I was like, I can't hear it. When Dr. Satan was on, I played his thing in the Rob Zombie and he couldn't hear it. So. Can you hear that? Now my Wi-Fi is being. Thumbs up if you can hear it. Lighting up cigarettes in the seven. 
seventh grade. That's what my mother taught me. She ain't asleep. Driving down 68. Drove just as back seat. Wishing hard that I could escape. Tripping down, down all the steps of the local school bus. Wishing I didn't. If our electric was on, I hope Dad left money for us. Cause three days and I haven't had much. And I'm tired of. Of being nice, I just don't have it inside me. I can't take much more shit from you. And I have cut you out of my life. You love me when you need a high. I'm done spending my money on you. Then, boy, we were gone, driving around listening to tunes. Cause we had peace of mind, if she couldn't find us, we are all constantly on the move. My whole life I've been running from you. I'm through with you. And I'm through with you. I had to share that. I've been checking. I've been, ever since Oliver Anthony, I've been listening to these backwoods country guys. And that fucking pretty emotional. You see him at the end just really losing his shit. And uh, it's got nothing to do with the show, but I don't care. I, I, and I think it's a great song. So Nolan Taylor, what sixty-eight, great tune. Oh, that <laughs> shine down's playing now. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, this is what I make with playing my music list. So yeah, so that's cool. I I didn't realize it played videos then. If I can go back and play a couple of videos, I'll fucking do that. Um, trying to get back to see now. I wish I was more like, this is where I could use some help with definitely is doing this stuff. Like bring, I don't, if I could somehow send you the link to go to my YouTube channel, Heather, that would be killer. Cause I could just fucking bring on videos, but what's up, Samaya. Thank you for checking in. Hello all she says, we're just kind of chilling. It's kind of a laid back episode. Nothing really on topic. I could have asked some people last minute, but I just want to go on for myself for once. I don't need to shoot the shit with someone every fucking week. I don't mind going on solo. I got plenty to talk about when I'm asked. If anybody's got questions, you can only ask me. Um, so in the meantime, to get you guys to fucking ask questions, let's go to some cool videos and see what I can't find what you guys want to talk about. What are Okay, so this is the original pet. Oh, I'll just play it. <laughs> hey, historians. Um, welcome back to another great, what's hopefully going to be a great episode, or I should say video. Um, I'm actually really excited right now. I'm going to try to match up as best I could, but back in this parking lot and right next to this water tower, this is the original pet cemetery site. This is 
was um, in the movie, Stephen King movie, the 1989 Pet Cemetery, the original one. Uh, this is where stuff was set up, and I believe this is it. I, when I've watched videos, I know it is because those are the rocks that line up. Some of the stuff is newer, but the rocks, if you look from the movie, the rocks were still there, leaned up against the uh, thing, the pile. It's really grown in, but this is it. It's right. Yeah, we, we actually Googled it and uh, the whole nine, and it's 317 High Street in Ellsworth, Maine. And this is the spot. And if you look at a lot of videos, people do walkthroughs and stuff. There's a lot. If you look at Pet Cemetery filming sites, you see the blue tower in the background. And these rocks were the ones that were brought in. And they had the rock mound. Right here is where the, the big wooden trees were, where them climbed up to go to the burial ground, which is actually in another part of Maine, Acadia National Park, where the McMark ground is. But this was the, yeah. It's grown in. They've clear cut a little bit, but this is like where his dog spot was, so to speak. And the big archway, I believe, was right here. The big archway to the pet cemetery when they came in. The crew parked there. And here's the archway. Would have been. And uh, they use this little spot here, which is kind of cool. There's actually a dice archway next door. And, um, of course, Ellsworth is next to Hancock where the Pet Cemetery house is. So, yeah, this was where Pet Cemetery was. This is where they came and his dog Spot was. And they said, sometimes dead is better. And, you know, the dead speak is what he said. And there's nothing that remains anymore. I mean, it's been 30-something years. But this is definitely it. If you look at locations, you see the rock tower there. I mean, I'm sorry, the water tower there with the parking lot. And this is pretty much it. Um, it's kind of cool as an X here. There's really not a lot of remnants or remainders of anything. What's that white thing under that tree? There's really nothing here. Oh, there's birch from the movie set. It's all deteriorated. People have picked it away. But uh, that's killer. I'm kind of awestruck right now because I want to come here for a while. And it's cool. There's the rock pattern. I wonder if it, it may have went deeper. Let me see a little bit. I'm going to walk a little bit because it may have went deeper. Now that I think about it. They may have came into this clearing. I'm trying to think. This might have been. Whoa. This might have been it. Spider web. This might have been. This might have been more it. I think this was more it. Because there's the rock pile. There's another rock pile. And that's where the trees were. This is it. This is the this is where it was. Because there's the rock pile still here. You can screenshot that from the movies. We found it, historians. I knew that was part looked familiar because of the rocks, but I remember these pile of rocks. I was like, there's way more rocks than that, I was thinking. And then I remember this part, and this is where you see, and I believe the wood was right here, the wooded mound, and this is where they climbed over. I don't even know if the tower was there then, but I remember the rocks were there and there. So this is the pet cemetery. This is what, because it was more open in the videos. I'm like, Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Fine, I know I get I trip over myself and like I get fucking really excited. Like when I found the grave site in um, Bangor's Mount Hope Cemetery, which is America's second our oldest garden cemetery. It's actually fashioned after the oldest one, which is Mount Auburn in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I've been there. That's where Longfellow's buried. But Mount Hope in Bangor, that's where the scene was where he buries Gage. It's the funeral scenes there. All, when Stephen King's there, Reverend, may the Lord keep you and hold you. But when Gage is there and he digs him up, I, mean, I had to go find that fucking spot. You line up the tree in the background with that other thing. That took me some time. But yes, oh, very cool. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate that. Um, give me a little bit, brother. You're coming right on. Alexis, thank you so much. Um, I'm glad you guys are enjoying that because it means a lot to me. I, I do this for myself because it's fun and it's... I like doing it, but if I could share it with people or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, if people enjoy it too, then that's half the fucking battle. All right, let me bring this on too, because I can uh, rewind it a little bit first. This is the Pet Cemetery House in Hampton. And, uh, wow, that's gorgeous. It's probably weird that we're even walking, but I'm sure they know why we go. There it is. 
There is the house used in the 1989 CFP classic. It's cemetery. And you can see it's still got the concrete. This thing here is the walkway, is the porch. That's where they drove the car in. And Ellie, how's it going? And that's where Ellie ran out. And there is a swing there. That's not the one she was on. The one she was on is where this grass has grown in here. The tree has fell since, but if you line up the shots, you can see that's where the tree was. And, uh, wow, that's gorgeous. Look at that. We just watched the movie last night again. Cool. So this is where the tree was, right here. And then when she, she found a path, and of course it's mowed, and you can almost see, almost see where the path goes there. That's amazing. These rock things are still here. And for everybody... Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm just watching it zoning out. Forget I'm even on a fucking podcast right now. Um, yeah, I take a lot of pride in this stuff. This, this is stuff you can get with historically haunted tours. I run a tour agency, and um, Danny Perez and Lauren Perez, clients of mine, the radicals, they drive around in a hearse. Uh, Danny makes coffin woods out of uh, Ouija boards out of coffin wood. They're based out of Connecticut. They actually came down from Connecticut to Bangor just to hang out with Heather and I for the day and take the tour. And they gave me pretty good little uh, tip, uh, a couple of little homemade goodies of theirs. They make their own, they pickle their own pickles and they make their own uh, uh, barbecue sauces and stuff. I got a bunch of that, some stickers. Um, that was fun. I'm trying to think of something. What can I show you guys? It's like really, we'll bring Brandon on in a second. Let me see. What could I do? You guys, like, you guys want your paranormal shit, obviously. I mean, you know, people aren't always into the horror movie stuff. It's like a movie location is a big deal. I get it. They want the horror stuff. Let me see. Okay. How about this? So in, in 2019, about four months before my mom passed away, Heather and I spent the whole night at Lizzie Borden's house in Fall River, Massachusetts. And when we get the room there, the girl, uh, Lorianne, or Lorianne, right, the girl that passed away, she pretty much told us don't, the rest of the people uh, canceled, so don't die. <laughs> so you're alone. So we had the whole house for a very small fee. Um, so that was really cool. What's up, my friend? Tony Spare Flanagan, what's going on? Thanks for checking in. Now let's check this out. Oh, there you go. What's working now? Oh, the street lights in the way. So that's the original house where they so stands. We just had a tour of the basement. Heard a couple fucking sounds, a couple things. There's some shit going on down there. And they say that this. She says, see, you can see the waves in that, that. That's an original window. If you can see the waves. Wow. So, Maggie, you watch this window. There was another couple that was supposed to stay. Uh, the girl said they didn't pay ahead of time, though. They're supposed to pay when they got here. And by the time this tour started at eight, I said they're not coming. And yeah. If you'll go to Lizzie Borden's website, it's. Close to, I think it's like 1800 bucks to rent out the whole house for the night. That's why a lot of paranormal places, when they do these night haunts, they'll charge you 100, 200 bucks a piece to cover the, you know. But we just got one room and no one showed up, so we took the place to ourselves. The original door, original steps. Hmm. Quiet little town, not. <clears throat> Gonna relax, just get done our tour. 1845, had some coffee. And uh, I'm gonna start bringing up the equipment here soon, start recording. The original columns, all the outside for the most part. Is original, original wood, original shingles, original lines, whatever you want to call them. So these are open and shut by the name. Probably original doorbell. 
one on each side. They say that they, these handles are all original too, and they go if you touched them a certain way, there may be a spot on there that that Lizzie touched that you didn't, or uh, that someone else hasn't yet. Steel. Who knows how many times you know? It's pretty cool. Hey, baby. So, oh. Ooh. There's Lizzie Borden house. There's the neighbor's house where the girl killed their kids and slit her own throat in the bathtub. And there's the, oh, there's a camera there. There's the county courthouse where Aaron Hernandez got found guilty. If you watch a lot of documentaries, this is where they start out, usually about right here. And they go, of course, this is the church. And they'll talk about, this is the story of Lizzie Borden, blah, blah, blah. There's the house. Let's go inside. Slow down, Hot Rod. Oh, isn't that just a thing of beauty? There's our room. This is a murder room. Boy, it there's a face in that top window, though, don't it? Yeah, you can't see it that well. It looks like there's something right there staring at me. Please wave back. No, maybe not. Oops. Can you see that top window? I don't know. My mind's playing games on me. Not much of a front yard. Yeah, that's your I was looking to see if I go in. There's a video where I do fucking go in the fucking house. Believe it or not, we did actually. Thanks for yeah. I had a good beard back then. They made me shave it for work. So I got this little rinky dink chin strap. But yeah, I had a pretty good beard. I was actually growing it since that I started growing it around 2018. And after my mom died a couple months after that. Dude, we went to Lizzie Borden's, Heather and I. Two months later, Lorraine Warren died. Three months later, my mom died. 2019. So it was one of the great years, one of the shit years, too. Uh, Brandon, I sent you the link. If you want to jump on, brother? What's he saying? Let me take a piss and I'll be there. <laughs> Thomas, what's up? Thomas uh, Patrick Gormley, the Archangel of the Paranormal. He was on with Boston Medium Scott Allen, another kind. They're both clients of mine. He was on the show last night, the Paranormal Project podcast. Slayed it. Talk about your home cases. I'm going to send you the link, too, Thomas. If you're around in about 15 minutes or so, I'll have you come on. Uh, for those of you tuning in, shout out to Dustin Grammer, client of mine, who gave me a nice t-shirt today in the mail. Nice Monster Media t-shirt, Monster Media coffee mug, couple stickers and pins. Appreciate you for that. Nice little gift to come home to. Uh, well, I was actually here because of the snow fucking storm. But And then, of course, Rosalie giving me the copies, every single copy of Castle Rock from 1985, the original Stephen King newsletters. Talks about stuff about like the pet cemetery and just different, really cool shit. Great shape stuff. Goes for big money on eBay. Check out Castle Rock newsletters and go see what those go for. Have fun. Got my bottle opener. Had to get me for Christmas last year out. Senior Bat. That's cast iron. <coughs> Fucking real shit. Where might the beer go? I don't think I took it out yet. Shout out to Raph, too. Give me a bunch of wrestling pictures and some stickers, man. Adam likes his gifts. I appreciate you guys. And if you know if I get the gifts, I'm going to bring them on. I'm going to talk about them like, like uh, candles by Alexis. I still haven't eaten my cupcake candle yet. <laughs> so I'm going to let this fucking guy take a piss. While he's doing that, let's go back real quick. I want to check out one more video before I bring him on. What do you guys want to see? What can I show off? 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 Let me see. 
I don't know. What's one of my most played videos, I guess, right? Is that what that would be? If you're there in chat, or if you're there, um, Brandon, give me one minute, because I want to check out fucking... I don't know. I guess what's my most popular? A WWE building and an abandoned building. Eastern State Penitentiary has got a lot of views. And Lorraine's Graves, pretty big. I went to the Fox and the Knife, which was Triple O's Lounge that Whitey Bulger went to in Quincy, Mass. Went to that with Heather. I met Miko Hughes. You guys want to see when I met Miko? That was fun. Kane Otter was there, too. That was fun. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's do this. All right. One last one. We'll bring Brandon on. He's not even ready yet. Hey buddy, Adam the Historian Ghost Hunter here with uh, uh, who probably a bucket list of mine for got to be my whole life since I've watched the movie Pet Cemetery. I've watched a lot of people document it. A lot of people I've seen the Grim Collective Life, the Grim Collective uh, with, with baby. They've been here and and they've helped me find the spot, which I've done a lot of research on my own. Me and Heather, Jessica, we've came here. Uh, me and Heather came here. Which in nature came here? Uh, say hi, Heather. Real quick on my YouTube channel. We say came here probably um, 2018. I think we came to go see Al Brady where he was shot. And we saw the gate was closed. The gate was closed because it was after dark where it was closed. But we found a spot. Let me get off my mug because I don't care about that right now. If you look, the scene is shot up on that hill right up there. Or so they're looking down at Stephen King. And I believe her name is Mary. the first cemetery, uh, the first grave. She was getting buried right here. And if you look, Stephen King's propped as the... Um, the Reverend, right in front of the grave that says Barry. And it says Perpetual Care in the Corner. So that yeah, put Stephen King, the Stephen King, here. About this spot, yep. with his hands up like this as a Reverend, looking up at the thing. Like this. So, real quick side note, um, as we have Pet Cemetery stuff, uh, Stephen King's famously known, uh, one of his characters is Georgie. Stephen King spent a lot of time at this, this America's second oldest graveyard here, Mount Hope Cemetery in Bangor, Maine, which is fashioned after Mount Auburn Cemetery in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is America's first garden cemetery. <clears throat> he found, he used to walk around here and he found some names. One of the names he found he thought was rather odd. Not odd, but just something you don't hear much and stuck with him. And he carried it over to be the young man who's only a year old that died here, but he died at about four or five years old in the movie. His name was Georgie. That was the son. Oh, that was the brother that died with the hat in the boat. Paper boat in the beginning of it. He's buried right next to Lizzie, which I imagine is his sister. Now, if I remember right, that puts the grave for Carrie not far from here. It's farther back, but not much farther. I should have did a little research before I went to record it. But I remember there's a Carrie grave. I don't I'm trying to think exactly. It wasn't so far off the beaten path, but it was out back here a little bit. We'll have to come back to that. Maybe Heather can kind of scan a little bit around here. I know it's not far. I look for coins and stuff. What we're going to do is go up to the hill here. Here is where the, the and I'll share pictures and uh, comments on my page and stuff. And it sucks like you don't have an editing thing to share movie scenes. But this is where the funerals were. This is where the hearse was parked. Where Gage, I'm sorry, where Gage, but um, where the guy that played Herman Munster and them had that conversation. He's like, why would God take her when he's got no fart like me around? They stood here and talked. And if you remember right, where they parked here as well, when Gage was buried. Now, when Gage was buried and the father parked Right around there or so. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He parked right around 1864. To Thank you. Big one. Thank you. Has the funeral. I, don't remember. I don't know. It literally feels like this could. Terry's. Thank you. Big one. Thank Terry's you. not so decorated. No. Here you go, sweet girl. If this story is true, and, Terry. and you, you are the inspiration, then girl. Yep. Damn. But you know what? Even if you're not having it being said just today, you are. And I'm going to come back and take pictures. It's going to be wet. I'm going to. Lewis. He runs by, and you can tell, and I'll show a screenshot later. Uh, he's by the 1869 and the flower blossom thing. So this one here is a, a pretty big one. He's like right about here. And you can see the background as he's walking with the shovels. They're going on the gauge. I believe the gauge is on this side. Now I'm pretty sure that's the staircase. If it is, this would be where gauge is possibly. But no, I'm pretty sure that's it. Or is it one of these? Let's keep going because I might be on the wrong one. I do a bit of research. I was, yes, this is it right here. He went up those stairs for another reason, I think. 
but Gage would be right here, actually. This is where it lined up, Ferris. And that monument I'm out of breath. puts Gage here. Yes. I corrected myself in my own video. <laughs> That's right. It lines up. And he came down, and he would have been right here. Would have been Gage. So, as you can see that in the background. What's up, guys? I corrected myself in my own video. I'm like, wait a minute. Gage is back there. Why is my computer so fucking dumb? There we go. What's up, Coast Diego? Guys, check out Coast Diego. Uh, Raf has got a great show. Let's find out. Right now, he's accepting sponsorship. It's $20 per episode to get him to be sponsored, to get your name out there, give him a script. He'll read it off. He'll share your pictures. He'll share your links. All that good stuff. Talk about you. Give you a shout out. If you want to do at least four consecutive weeks or more, instead of 20 bucks, it's 15 bucks to sponsor Coast Diego. So check that out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do the paranormal sites, but everybody and their fucking brother does paranormal sites. Everybody else and their brother does the Conjuring House and Conway Twitty's House and fucking yada you do you do and you fucking conjure it. And it's like, that's all well and good. Like Lizzie's is popular. I get it. But at the same time, man, going to movie filming sites, that's hip. That's new. And that's getting me paid. And I like it. It's fun. It's interesting. It's different. Um, thanks for the link, Heather. Oh, my boy's here. This cat. Um, so I got asked by Tony Spear to be his guest at the at the Warren convention because Tony's my boy. He was, on, he was on last week. Go check out the other the old episode on Historically Haunted YouTube channel. That's where all my, my, uh, my past ones go. Archives. So I go there. And they bring me out back to the VIP part. And there's Wade Kirby and all these fucking guys running around and Dan Rivera. And they're unloading all this stuff. And I meet this cat, Brandon. And he's, you know, like me, kind of the bulky type dude. And we're unloading haunted mirrors and stuff. And we're asked to bring on Annabelle. And uh, he's, he, we vibe, man. And ever since then, he's been a cool chat. Brandon, three seconds, you're coming on, brother. Brandon Galding. What's going on, man? What's up, homie? How you been? Yeah. Good. Are you here? Are you okay? Yeah. Good. Yep, everything's good. Dude, yeah. You're a big supporter of the show. Um, you're a cool cat, dude, but you got a big heart, and you're a hell of a good worker, man. I want to know your story, brother. We never really get to, get to talk too much. I want to know how you got to the Warren Convention. What got you involved in all this wacky shit, this paranormal stuff, brother? Uh, well, it, it started um, several years ago. Um, we kind of joined some of the um, uh, PRS investigations. We... We join uh, Ryan Buell. Uh, we haven't been in the last few. Um, he moved to Texas, uh, so it's kind of harder for us to make it out there. But uh, we've uh, we've gone on multiple investigations with him. And uh, the first Paracon, I believe, was back in 2020 or 2021. Um, and he, I think it was, I don't know if it was the last time he was there, but he was there. Um, and we were there with some of the other PRS guys who kind of helped him. Um, I know during the whole um, time frame, whenever they had guest speakers on, uh, we were kind of helping him live stream over on the side. Um, but that's kind of how, how we got into it. And uh, we've, uh, you know, he's come out here. Uh, he stayed in our house a couple of days when we went and did Cabin on 360. Um, oh. He stayed a couple nights here. And um, um, we, Virginia, we stayed Virginia, one night uh, there. West Virginia or Vi no, Virginia? No, Virginia. Right? Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, it's in yep. Virginia. Yep. So that's kind of how uh, how we started, and then uh, we investigated last year West Virginia State Penitentiary, and uh, Nesper came along. Uh, Chris, Wade, um, and Dan uh, were there with us, and we kind of like split up and did different sections. Um, they actually have. Um, we kind of, my wife and I actually split off with Chris and Dan and uh, walked around a little bit. And then they kind of took, took an opportunity to do a, like a short little interview because one of their, one of their yeah, Paracon right. ad, ads, yeah. they, they kind of had an excerpt from the interview they did with us. Um, oh. So then we just kind of hit it off there. Um, they got in contact and said, Hey, you know, did you guys want to volunteer? Um, we jumped on it. Uh, unfortunately, my wife had training that got dropped on her at the last minute, so she couldn't go. So that's why I was there solo. Um, that's kind of a, a short synopsis of, of how we kind of got into it. And how, I, I, how like we met the team. I, I like that you're, I don't think this the wrong way, but you're like the unsung hero. You're involved with all this shit, but you don't go on Facebook gloating about it. Like, look at me, everyone. You're very much under the radar. I think you very, you like to stay personal, but you like to be involved. Is that correct? Is that fair? 
I, yeah, uh, you know, and and we've shared some stuff. We we've, we've posted some some stuff before. Um, you know, photos and, and whatnot um, from you know last year at the at the penitentiary. Um, we posted. I, I have to go back. We we've been to the Shamrock House. Um, you know, uh, Cabinet on three sixty. Um, I'm trying to think of of all the other places. Um, this will be Kimmy's third time. It'll be my second. We're going at actually at the end of the month, but it's just kind of our, uh, it's not like the PRS. It's, it's some of us in PRS. Uh, one of the women had the birthday and she enjoyed it so much. She's like, Hey, listen, I'm going to rent it out for myself. If you guys want to go and chip in, um, you know, it's like a thousand bucks a night, I believe. Um, wow. You know, feel free. So a bunch of us jumped in. I think she's invited some of her friends. Uh, this time it's only a one night. I know the last time we were there it was three nights. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll post some stuff on, on Facebook, just, you know, group <laughs> photos and stuff, but you know, I, I don't just constantly, um, post things. I mean, we did kind of start our own local, thing just my wife and i um we've done a Where few private investigations and we, we'll post you got, you got, you got uh, we'll, we'll post pages? some stuff there do what i don't know if you had facebook yep. pages or anything though yeah we, we've got we called it viper um vip or um and it's just her and i right now um we've we've done personal resonance we've done uh a couple uh, she's kind of got an in with with a couple of the schools because a couple of the elementary schools, um, a lot of the employees were having, um, and they couldn't really keep anybody on because they thought that it was haunted. Now you know, we went in there open mind, um, you know, and this is not something that we kind of like. Oh, that was my phone. Sorry. Um, That's all right. It's happened before. You're good. It's not something that we kind of like publicly put out there, um, but. but you know, we went in to kind of try to help ease them. And, you know, for the most part, there may have been one or two weird things, but a lot of the things that they were kind of reporting, we were able to to, to debunk. Um, you know, like I said, there's a couple things that, that were minor things that we couldn't really, we couldn't figure out an explanation. Um, I don't know if you just heard, that was, that was one of the things uh, that kept popping up. Uh, my wife has one of them automatic air fresheners. And that kept popping up, or sound kept popping up on on our recording the EVP when we go back and, and review, and it it sounded like a voice um, until we started checking every room. And I was like, you know, there's one room that has like a, a smell. All the other ones smell like a, a classroom, but there's one that has that floral smell to it. So of course, I walk in there with my recorder, I set it back, you know, because I'm trying to imitate the exact um just the, everything how it was when we picked it up so i set my recorder where exactly where it had been before and she went in and hit the back and manually set it off and then we went back and reviewed it and sure as hell man it was that that same exact sound so we were able to de debunk that oh, um great they thought work. classroom lights were popping on um the problem is, is is nobody was ever there at two or three in the morning um they were reviewing video and seeing what looked like classroom lights popping on um so we kind of experimented with some stuff and, and i actually figured out that uh they have these new monitors they're, they're kind of like huge tv screens that are basically computers where they can do you know classwork and stuff on and watch videos um these cameras are infrared and these things are kind of like computers where they have a sleep mode and every so often they'll kind of kick themselves out of it and because the cameras are infrared when that tv screen would light up it illuminated the entire classroom it looked like the light was getting turned on um so that uh, we kind of debunked that one um they, they were a little disappointed but it's right there you know every, you know it, it is a school kids do go there we didn't want to freak parents out but you know like as far as the employees loves the you gotta debunk it's true because when you do find something it's, it's that more authentic right you got to be the stickler and and that's that's exactly what we've discussed you know even uh personally between her and I, and, and even within the PRS group, it's it's like when when I feel like I've got something that I just legitimately can't explain, I, I get excited. I get you know everyone asks me how can you do that, you know you get scared, and I'm like, I I actually I get goosebumps, but it's out of excitement because you know it, it's something that I I can't explain. Um, I don't want to be one of them people that every, every little thing that they hear see um, 
it's got to be a, a, some paranormal event that's happened. Um, you know, we go, with, she's law enforcement. I'm former. So we kind of go in with that mentality where um, it's not like we go in as skeptics, but, you know, because we, we, we've heard some things. I've got plenty of recordings, EVP, from even Cabin on 360 of voices actually answering my questions. Um, that's a really EVP heavy area. Um, not the guy. I have, I have a bad uh, habit of spider webbing kind of out in conversation, but, uh, you know, I went out in the woods there. Um, I know you've been there and walk, it was like one o'clock in the morning and walked the trail by myself and just had my recorder and a flashlight. Uh, most of the time I just kind of clicked it on crazy bastard. just to make sure. Huh? You crazy bastard by yourself. Yeah. You don't got much fear, but, but being a law enforcement officer, no, you're no. not supposed to have fear. You're supposed to bury that. Thank you for your service. By yeah, the way. And, and kind of be, kind of be open, um, you know, because you know they say some spirits can kind of feed off of that. Um, uh, but I got multiple. I got one female that kept coming up um, even the the next night, and my wife joked that I had a girlfriend now. Um, but I actually got it was a multi syllable response, um, and we we kind of like two or three of us deduced that she either the voice says my husband sent me. Um, I didn't catch the first male voice that came up that said, fuck you. Um, somebody else caught that. Um, and then toward the end, it was pitch black. I was using my flashlight just to kind of, you know, get my footing so I didn't trip, trip over a root. Uh, but toward the end, I was using it a lot more. I had it on and I was shining it. Um, and I was like, hey, do you want to, do you want to take a walk with me? You know, I'm almost finished. I'm almost at the end. And when I went back and reviewed that, you hear a, a faint what sounds like a yes and it's really clear you hear no light in a, in a female voice it's like she didn't want me using the flashlight um and boy man i, I, I was pumped um because i was by myself uh and i always tell people it was before i bought a new recorder it was an older recorder digital recorder it doesn't have a usb port so i can't transfer files to a computer which also means I can't import anything. I can't put anything on the computer, alter it, and then stick it back. Um, Old school. You know, where anybody can claim that, that it's been altered. Um, the downside to that is if that thing ever goes crap, I've, I've lost them. Um, so I kind of learned my yeah. lesson and bought, and bought a new one. So wow. speaking, well, um, speaking of my wife. Uh, oh, hello. You're live to 12 people via Facebook. You're live. Right. Our boxes are attacking her. I, I hear their paws. I love it. Uh, Dylan Wagner from um, Rec uh, Reckless Paranormal says, nice to meet you, Brandon. Great episode. Interesting backstory on why Appreciate you're it. paranormal. Good people. Good people. Um, wow. So, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, you and your wife kind of just flow. Do you guys got a bucket list place that you guys want to go inspect or just hang out? Uh, I mean, we've got, there's, there's so many, uh, we missed, uh, PRS went to, went to Salem one time and, and, and we missed it. Uh, we'd love to be, you know, go investigate Salem, uh, Lizzie Borden's house. Um, oh. there's this, there, a lot of the upper East coast, you know, has a lot of sites. Um, we're originally from Missouri. Um, and I'd seen oh, some, some people, um, we're, we're going up to, to this uh, one of the state penitentiaries up there that I've heard has had. I think it's been, um, I don't know if it, it, when they changed ghost hunters, I don't know if it was on taps when it was taps or if it was on ghost hunters, but I know they've been there. Um, so it was kind of cool. Um, what state's in, that? Uh, Missouri. Oh, oh, that's where you were. It was a, it, it's, a, it's an old penitentiary that's, I, I can't think of the name right now, but uh, it's it's not active. Um, it's you ever heard any places in the neck of the woods? You ever heard any main places? Um, not. I may have, but not realize that they were in Maine. Um, I I haven't been. Um, I think the furthest east was Connecticut. Um, I think that that, that we've been, um, and that was that first Paracon uh, that we drove out. Um, actually, no, we flew out. Sorry, we had to drive back because that was right around the COVID um, and they were having issues with flights and our flight got canceled three or four different times. It was uh, Halloween. Oh. We promised the kids that we would be back in time for trick or treating. So we made a scramble. Uh, the last time it got canceled was I think within like six minutes of when we were supposed to board. So we just kind of looked, 
yeah, we kind of looked at each other and just started mad dashing down uh, to rent a car. We rented a car, drove all the way there home to Virginia. Um, we were literally yeah. pulling in the driveway when her friend was bringing the kids out to go trick or treat. So that close. So we we made it, but we were. Oh, we're we. Uh, if it's not too terribly far away, we're gonna drive. Uh, Brandon, do you do uh, YouTube? Uh, YouTube in? Do you Twitch or YouTube or anything like that? Or uh, I do. I do t I'm not not with this. I mean, like gaming and stuff. I do. You know, I, I've got a Twitch. I don't really do much of it. But as far as YouTube, I know that we set up a uh, a YouTube channel for our Facebook page. We haven't uploaded any video. The investigations we've done the first private one that, that we had uh was uh a family that has a lot of acres there's a lot of civil war history out here um and they've got a lot of civil war history um they've got an old grave site that's that's on their property um the, the the woman always suspected that there were spirits um you know videos like that we don't upload because they they asked that we keep um you know the investigation private which you know we've got no problem um we're not there to just kind of throw everything out there for everybody to see and privacy wise um we weren't we didn't name where we were going um we didn't there, there are some weirdos out there we didn't want anybody showing up just out of the blue i mean you know they've oh. i've heard stories about the conjuring house people just showing up um after the new owner people bought take it. reality too far they take they you got to respect people's property man you can't just yep. fucking <laughs> I don't yeah. care if you watch Ghostbusters 500 times. Stay the fuck home. Like you can't yeah. be. No, and you respect that. You 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 got a different. I get that, man. You you're a respectful cat. We were with Annabelle. That's why when you and I get asked to load up Annabelle at the convention at Mohegan Sun by Tony Spera, we looked at each other like, let's do it, and we just did it. Yeah. And we don't even know each other, but we just let each other. And I that won my respect. And of course, tuning into all the podcast. Let me ask you some fun ones, man. While I got to snag some more time out of you. Um, okay. Give me some. Give me some music you listen to, dude. What do you groove out to? Um, I, honestly, um, I mean, I've always been like a big, a big Tool fan. I, Tool, Pussifer, Perfect Circle. I, I got a bad habit. It probably drives the. It, it's probably why my wife drives uh, more often than me because it's like the same. She probably gets tired of the same music. Um, every now and then, I'll kind of dab back into the '90s. Um, I'm older than what I look. Um, I'll be 45 this year. Um, I can probably Holy pass shit, the 30. Yeah, I'm I can probably pass the 35. With yeah. Clean. Um, yeah, brother, you look good, homie. Fuck yeah. So I mean, that's that's kind of. I mean, I don't really drive long distances. Um, so whenever I listen to music, it's, it's kind of those. I can probably get a few songs, and then you know I'm at work or wherever. Um, the bad thing about when we take long trips, we. Uh, it, the, the old law enforcement in us, we, we usually listen to like true crime podcasts, you know, and just listen to that kind of thing just because time flies when, when you're listening to it. Um, but other than that, man, I mean, uh, some old 90s stuff, uh, STP, um, yeah. Nine Inch Nails, stuff like oh, that. Okay. What I, I like Pearl to. Jam myself. Pearl Jam's a little different, but I like Pearl Jam. Yeah, um, yeah. What you go to for movies, brother? What, what do you like? Horror? Do you like suspense, thriller, comedy? Um, it, I like them all, man. It, it kind of depends on on the mood. I, I like horror as long as it's it's good. Um, I mean, I, hey, there's man. a lot of people that enjoy like really cheesy stuff, um, and I do too. Um, I just watched while I was eating earlier. I finished. I watched like half the other day, and I just finished Thanksgiving. Um, and it was, I mean, there was a couple of parts I had to just kind of laugh at. It's super gory because it's Eli Roth. Um, oh, the but, horror movie. Yes, Thanksgiving. Yeah. I watched it. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah, Eli. <laughs> well, yeah, I like the horror suspense. Um, you know, it, it just, you know, she's a huge Harry Potter fan. So, I'm, you know, we've watched those movies thousands of times. Um, she, you know, we, we got into the MCU a little bit. We were going to the movie theater with... You know, those are great. We haven't really been to one in a while at the theater. Um, Any driving out there? I'm Any sorry. Driving Any driving movie theaters out there? The uh, not, not in the immediate area. Um, if there are, they're probably not terribly close. Um, 
a lot of times, you know, we'll, whether it's a last minute thing, you know, we'll, we'll set up date nights. Usually our date nights consist now of, uh, we go with her sister and her sister's husband and do escape rooms. Um, we were doing oh. when, last year up until, until we went on vacation to the outer banks, we we were practically doing one a month. I mean, we were clearing out in, in Williamsburg. Um, we, we were clearing out some of them, you know, had multiple rooms and we were clearing a lot of these places out because we were just doing one a month um we we kind of stopped for a while um and then we just did one last week so that's kind of we our date nights kind of consist of the escape rooms because they're they're pretty fun um y'all are training you know, your brain all times. the time <laughs> oh it does we we have we, we all have our, our off nights and on nights um we all have our, our weaknesses um and strength yeah. so we kind of play onto it so so it is pretty enjoyable um you know we we do get that itch uh, i'm not gonna lie to to investigate um you know we, yeah. we watch shows or we watch podcasts and you know locally we we don't go out pestering people we may hear um you know i heard of a story um one of the local deputies his wife's friend had some issues and said hey you know th this is our email um I'm not gonna pressure you know if she just even just wants to ask questions um she she can shoot us an email um you know we if anybody wants something you know we we let them reach out we're not gonna go pester and pester um because it's no, not about crazy. just we enjoy it but you know if, if somebody wants questions answered uh we want to make sure that they're comfortable you know we we don't want to feel like that we kind of pushed our way in um because it's really not about just going and you know we have fun with it but we take it seriously uh we want to be respected you, you know as, as honest investigators so yeah you, get, you, you, know, know, you, that, bullshit. you know you're not doing no. this for fucking thrills and likes and, and heart emojis you're doing this because it's the right thing to do that's the difference you're good people i can sense that through your words and the way you were man and your wife too i don't know her that well but you obviously peas in a pod otherwise you wouldn't be together so like you said earlier, just doing the home cases. I think that's more important. It's great going to Lizzie's. It's great going to Salem. But helping out yep. a family, letting them rest at night, mm -hmm. that's really where it's at, I think. And that, kudos to you, man, because a lot of these weekend warriors don't do that. And I I know people are probably going to lose some viewers now. But, you know, and it's fun sightseeing. Don't get me wrong. But it, that's where the heart and soul is at, man. Um, so what yeah, the fuck well, is we go to like... Sorry, we, we, we go to like West Virginia. We've done Shamrock. You know, we'll go there where it's a private. You rent the place out. You know, we'll, we'll have our fun there. Um, but if it's somewhere sure. where it, it's open, uh, somebody lives there, you know, it, it, it there's that switch, you know, where it's, it's you know, we may joke around every now and then amongst oh. ourselves, but we, we take the investigation part of it seriously. So, um, but there, there's still there's still that itch, even though we take it seriously, it's still fun for us to do, you know um i'm i'm just as intrigued to to find evidence as i am to i get just as tickled um uh, when we de debunk stuff you know um i, I don't i don't like like i said i'm more excited when it's something that you can't explain versus just automatically assuming i you know we can just mark that off the list of things that someone's mentioned and move on um so yeah. we, we we enjoy it that's where the detective work greatly said, dude. That's where the parent. I gotta have you on as a co-host one of these times because that's where the um, someone commented. That's where, excuse me. That's where the detectiveness and the police work comes into play, of keeping a strong mind, always thinking, staying sharp, staying focused, and and remaining calm. Though, I can see you're very chill. I don't see you getting too hyped over things as far as scared goes. I see you getting excited, but not like all oh, 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 you know what I mean. Like these people is yeah. like, whoa, you seem like you can handle your own. And I think that's the difference. I think the spirit sees that too. Um, and for your wife to be right there with you, that's a fucking partner. You guys obviously nail things together. I mean, I can't, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, just that, don't, so don't ask really, us to put up yeah. wallpaper. You know, we, we can investigate together, but don't don't ask to put up wallpaper together because she'll. Hey, no she'll one's perfect, me. Brandon. <laughs> Oh, hey, you get. Uh, I usually end the show. We can go another five, 10, 12, 15 minutes, whatever. But I usually ask my guests if they get a question for me. You got something for me, tough guy? I love to answer a question from you. Thank you. 
Let me see if I can switch to my Wi-Fi because it's kind of static and distorted. Oh, that happens. It could be the main fucking weather for all I know. You see me? There we go. Oh, are you frozen? Oh, are you frozen, Brandon? Uh oh. Brandon's coming back. He's frozen. It's always when someone asks a question of me that they freeze up. I swear. Brandon's a good dude, man. Um, all right, he's back. Three, two, one. It says I can bring him back. You back? Yep. There we go. Sorry about that. It might be my wall. Let me close some windows on this. It could be my. It could have been me switching. There we go. All right, so you got a question for me, my friend? Uh, hey, you're you're gonna be at uh, at the Paracon this year, aren't you? Getty's don't know yet. Huh? That's gonna be. A- I want. It's it. actually it's closer October, to us. Right? Um, yeah. September. It's actually they changed it to September. Uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, that's manageable. That's manageable. You guys are all staying at the Eisenhower, right? New what? I'm sorry. Eisenhower Hotel. Is that where it is? Yeah, um, I'm trying to. I think I think we're still kind of uh, working. I I think so, a lot of the other PRS people are going, um, and I think Shannon Shannon was there uh, this last time. Uh, me, Brandy, Shannon um, were were helping, um, and I think she she said that there were there were like uh, a group like rooms set aside. We kind of have to get the uh, the info for that, but. Um, I'm not sure which hotel we're going to be staying in, uh, but my wife uh, is actually going to be there. I was going to say you'd finally get to meet her um, if you were able, if you if you were going to be there this time. Uh, yeah, put a love face to in the name. You guys will be there all week. So, we do sex bridge and shit. Oh, we actually got a question for you. Yep. Not from the Tony Spera, but another Tony Spera. Uh, Brandon, how long have you been doing this and what inspired you to do this with regards to paranormal investigations? We kind of covered that, but if you want to maybe just. Yeah, it was, it was about 20. I know my wife started uh, a little bit. She started kind of going um, before I did with, with Ryan and in the group. And then I, uh, the first time that, that I went was the Shamrock house. Um, and then after that, it just kind of snowballed. That was probably about 20. I believe it was I think 2020 whenever um i personally started um i think she's got another year or so on me um but about 2020 um you know we, we always enjoyed paranormal shows um you know we took a lot of the stuff with a grain of salt um to be honest with you because you know we we know how production stuff is um and it's actually kind of funny because we got to talking about that we went and actually investigated the belmont inn um before west virginia Ooh, yeah. with prs and um actually james anito was there that time um aaron thompson from 28 days haunted um and we all kind of were, were talking to, to to him and and he was talking about you know the the production you know how much that goes into some of these shows um and of course he was referring to, to some of the things in 28 days haunted and how uh and he's always he's got the spot about that i guess I think my wife Kimmy had watched more of it, uh, but I guess there's an episode where they they've got him um, on camera crying, and he said it's it's the it's the way that they cut the scenes because you know they made it seem like I was I was to the point where this was all too much for me, but what they don't show is they sat us all around at the very start, and they kind of asked you know me a personal question, you know the an emotional charged question. Um, and so he opened up and talked about it. And of course, you know, he got emotional. And so they recorded that and then they spliced that into something else to where it Aww. seemed like when stuff was happening and then they kind of show him upset. You know, it gives off that that image of, of you know, being stuck in this place is, is, is too much. Um, so he said, you know, there there's always that little level, you know, that production putting their hands and stuff. Um, yeah. So it, it was kind of cool, but the, the Belmont, we really didn't get a whole lot done because, I mean, it's still open for business. So we were, I think we got a little bit in the bar, um, 
but it was open for business. So you had the bar that was open. You couldn't really do any any uh, audio stuff because you were picking up interference from you. Could you may not hear it as as well sitting in a room, but then when you go back and play your video recorder, you're hearing the laughing and everything from just below you or down the hall. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> Boy. you know, that, that was probably one of the least favorite places I've been just because it was open to the public and they actually had a band at one point in time. We had to wait. We started later cause they had a band outside. I guess somebody what? had set up and reserved a live band. So okay. we're like, well, it's supposed to end at 11. We would have liked to have gotten ready and started a little bit earlier than that. But you know, it, you can't do all that if you're going to do a serious investigation you can't can't have all that background noise um leftover energy it, too really it's kind of interfering with your yeah um i gotta yeah. ask you kind of a maybe you, you don't have to answer this and maybe it's an insult but i think it's not who's your what's your no, maybe not favorite but what's the most appealing serial killer to you do you have one um in your line of work appealing, uh I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't use the word uh, there's actually i'm trying to i'm trying to think of his name but there's a podcast that goes over um i think most of the seasons are of this guy um there's one season that covers uh, a woman uh and i'm trying to remember his name for the life of me but i really wish and and even though he's you know he was caught he was put in prison he committed suicide this guy continues to make episodes because he's looking he goes and looks at missing person case, cases um and he sees a lot of similarities in like the types of locations these people disappeared um, oh. um some of the stuff surrounding it because this guy actually yeah, it, it's called uh if you want to check it out uh true crime bullshit is the podcast <laughs> and uh one of one of his one of his um slings actually i think made more of the news um it was a young a young girl young woman uh early 20s 2019 i don't i don't remember but she worked i think in an ice cream i could be wrong on this it's been a while but it was one of them little little, little kind of it was on the street and she, i think they made like snow cones or something and he got in there he was actually watching her for days and he uh according to the podcast he had planned on because there's there's recordings of interviews that he did with the fbi and he had originally oh. planned on kidnapping her and her boyfriend um but the boyfriend didn't show up that night so he kidnapped her um so he ended up he, he killed her he sent proof of life to the family, but what he had done was he killed her. He put her in a freezer in his home and he was, he had a daughter. He was dating a girl at the time. They went on vacation. He stuck her in the freezer. When he got back, he sewed her eyelids open, took a picture <laughs> for proof of life, um, trying to get money because what he was doing was taking money from people. But this guy traveled all over the place, sometimes flying, sometimes driving. He said kill kits would bury kill kits all over the country. So he would go to this part of the country. He already had a kill kit buried. He would go grab that. He would find somebody that that sparked his, his interest and he would literally stalk them for days to set up the right time. Um, he, he killed an elderly couple and a lot of the women he, he raped as well. Um, but the, the husband put up a fight oh, and killing him sooner than he yeah. planned on. Um, but with a lot of this a lot of the killings um he would get on forums and he would make up names and he would start saying stuff that they figured only someone who had intimate knowledge of the cases would have known um but he started wiping his hard drives um he he knew he started screwing up and getting sloppy um toward the end and they finally caught him and interviewed him um and with this podcast and all these other missing persons um he picked people up at campsites uh people guys even guys that would go fishing um he's killed men by themselves too um Dude. some of these people went missing at campsites some of the mo's seem similar so this guy is wondering if there's not more killings that could be contributed to him um and if so i mean it, i mean he outdoes a lot of a lot of these other serial killers that you know they've made movies about i know he's not a cannibal um but he's he's 
probably responsible for a lot more deaths. Deaths. Um, I I think he's probably like close to a hundred. Um, personally, um, wow. So I he's probably one that that intrigues me the most. Um, he was very arrogant. Um, but just kind of trying to find, you know, and they found found kind of his MO and similarities, but it, you know, it's intriguing because I would like to know if some of these other missing people could be contributed to, to him, you know, get closer to their families. Um, so it's, yeah. it's kind of interesting to, to, to kind of keep up to date with that stuff, to see if he finds anything else out. Oh, he's still alive or no. Did he get put to death? Do you remember? I'm sorry. You were kind of cutting out. Oh, sorry. Did he get put to death? Is he still alive? No, he he was arrested. Um, he he was in, in prison. Um, he wrote, I believe, it didn't make much sense, but he, he wrote a suicide note, and he actually killed himself in prison. Oh, um, no way. He, he only, he had an idea of what he knew they could prove who that, you know, the FBI could link him to, and he would give them details on those because he knew that they wow. took his hard drive. He knew that he they had that they could link him to this. So he would only give them stuff, information, intimate details, tell them, and I'm saying intimate details, he step by step what he did um, wow. when he killed each of them. Uh, but he would only give them what he thought they could prove. Wow, so, and, and they knew that there was far more than that. I so, tell I mean, you, what's it? The, the whole, the whole if you're gonna if you're gonna die anyway, I guess he just you know I don't think he was looking for I don't think he was one of them guys that was looking for the fame in it. I mean, he was he was ex military. Um, he he was just a sociopath. You know, it's just there was something that that just wasn't right in his head. And he was a smart guy, but there was just something that was intimately wrong with him. I tell you. Though, Burying those death kits and pre-burying them and waiting to put different that's that I've never heard. That's pretty intriguing to me. That's that's definitely a movie, so to speak. Not that that you know, way he didn't get caught with any of the stuff. Like he could drive somewhere and he wouldn't he wouldn't have that stuff in, in his vehicle when he would he go just, home. He'd go back and bury it and, and bury it back. So he always had something available. He you know, because a lot of people get caught, they go into Walmart and they buy stuff. Um, right, right before the, the killing, you know, there's different yeah, things, you know, the same the chemicals, you know, similar items that was used in, in the slang. He bought all this stuff and sometimes it was different stuff and he buried it. Sometimes the stuff sat there for months to, to a year or more before he you was in that area and would use it. There could be still some now that he had before that he planned on using before he got caught. There could be still some. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, uh, there's probably all kinds of kill kits because I, I don't think he ever told anybody where those kill kits were, were buried. There's probably kill kits, you know, 50 years from now, someone's going to be clearing out some wooded, <laughs> you know, wooded area to build a, a, a neighborhood. And they're going to come across this bag full of knives, rope, duct tape. And, um, oh my God. you know, it's, it's just, it's crazy that he, that he thought that far ahead. I'm going to get 10 more minutes out of you. Is that cool? No, that's cool, man. Um, you got a question for me? Did you ask me a question yet? Um, I, I just asked if you were going to be at Paracon this year. Um, oh, you I wasn't, did. I wasn't right, sure right, if you were right. going. No, well, I Tony did invite me again, which is great. But like you said, it's the travel. But I got to know, man, you plan on coming to Maine? Because I'd love to show you like the B-52 crash site, Stephen King's house. There's a witch grave in York. Um, there's a pirate ship seen off the coast of Portland. You have any oh, wow. interest in coming to Maine at all? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I've always been a big Stephen King fan, too. Um, when I was growing up, I, you know, the, the books, I don't know if it was the gore and just the, it was different. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, her and I have talked about going all the way, you know, we would love to go all the way up that coastline and just kind of hit a lot of those sites and just, you know, it doesn't even have to be paranormal. Um, Please do, though. I will be your guide. Let you do your thing with your wife. But you want to see some movie filming sites where Casper was filmed and and the shine not shining, but um, oh, what's the Born and Sin? Come on in the fucking movie that's from the winter time there um, that he does. You know that you ever seen that one Stephen King movie? What the fuck is the name of that? Heather, help oh. me out. Ah, uh, Storm of the Century. That was filmed sure. in Maine too. But I, I think you and your yeah. wife in front of Stephen King's gate, dude, in front of his house. I could take that picture for you. No, that would be nice. 
it'd be my pleasure to be your, your guide, man. I, oh, I'd love to cool. come up. Yep. We just got to set aside that, that time to do it, man. But yeah, I would love to be up there. And if you, we, we ever do, I'll, you'll be the first one I hit up. I just love to kiss your ass, man, but you've been awesome to me. You donate stars all the time. You really help support the show. You're always in chat bullshitting and having fun. Like in my old beard before I had to shave it. And I had to bring you on. I wish it was more formal. I'll have to do it next time. Get a poster. Maybe have you and your wife come on. We'll talk paranormal as a team. I'll get you good. Fire. In like a month, I'll give you some dates I have in May. Okay. And, um, but thank you for jumping on last minute. Um, we got about no minutes to go. Anything you want to talk about? Um, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, you kind of put me on. I, I kind of I feel like I'm supposed minute. to, supposed hey, to decide where, where to eat. Um, Mama, want to come on and say hi. She can pop her head on and say hi real quick. Kim, you're out. Right. She's. I've been. Uh, she, she. She watched me. Hey, honey. You want to jump on yeah. and say hi? Uh, she, she may have. She may have jumped on to Red Dead Redemption too. She's been kind of. She got hooked after seeing me play that. That's a good they, game, Red Dead Redemption. I think, I think she saw me. She's like, ooh, I can. I can play. No, we'll make it more formal next time. We'll give you guys a poster, <laughs> some advertisement. Um, okay. Oh, we'll she, some- she's in. The, she, she said she's in. I'm in the middle of a mission. I get it. He I said, get it. He said you want to come say hi. Oh. This, is, this is Adam. Oh. This is the, the guy I told you about. We met at prayer He's sitting in the dark. Hey, hey. Dan. <laughs> we're, 12, we're 12 people live right now on Facebook promoting your paranormal team, husband and wife team. People oh. think it's awesome. Tony Sparrow's cousin's checking in saying it's great you guys are together checking out. We're promoting you. We're going to get you on in a month. We'll get you on the flyer and everything. And I appreciate you serving in our paranormal, I'm, I'm sorry, police unit. And oh, thank unit. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you, both your services and both fields. So we'll get you next time. Go kill some zombies and shit. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you saying hi. Thanks, Kim. Um, Kim's awesome. Brandon's awesome. This is a last minute kind of thing. Brandon just kind of jumped on. I gave him the link. He was taking a quick piss. Um, Brandon, give me something other than America you'd like to go see, like Ireland, Egypt, um, Italy, man. Brazil. I know. I know she's been overseas. Um, I haven't. Um, like Never. Italy, um, I have not ever. Um, um, Italy, like, trying to, you know, I guess the, the, the cliche stuff, you know, it, Italy and, and Rome. Taking, taking one of them boat rides. Um, Venice, the streets of water. Venice, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, not just, you know, I guess there's the romantic part of it. But, um, what about paranormal, though? Like the Suicide Forest, Japan? We talking Stonehenge. We talking yeah, that would that, that one would you know it is you know I haven't been in law enforcement, but it it's one of those where um, I guess I haven't kept up really. You know, I I I'd read stuff years ago, but that would be one of those those ones where I'd be that switch would flip and I'd be like on high alert, not knowing whether someone's just recently gone out there. Um, it was well known for for people going out there and ending their lives. Um, Paranormal stuff. I mean, there's a lot of locations we saw on shows that would have been, you know, castles and whatnot. I, I couldn't give you a single name if I tried. Um, you like that shit, though? Ireland, like the old castle with the drawbridge. Oh, or yeah. I That's mean, it'd be beautiful. Epic. And yeah, yeah, it would be awesome to go see. You know, uh, we watched it. Ghost Hunters International, where, where they oh. went to different sites. Um, and those would just be just beautiful. But it was one of those where, you know, at the time I'm watching, I'm thinking those things, but you know, the, the location didn't really cement in my head because I'm thinking, okay, I'm never going to actually go there. Um, you so, know you know, we, we, we have twins and they just turned 11. Um, Double trouble. <laughs> who, who would have known kids get more expensive as, as they age? But, <laughs> and the government gives out less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we just got him a gaming PC. Um, and that's where he spends most of his evenings for a couple hours. Um, it's not geez. the 80s or 90s anymore, my friend. There's no one out there playing shooting hoops or doing fucking street hockey anymore. You go by neighborhoods, there's no basketball court. They're all empty. No, I know. And a lot of the neighborhoods, HOAs, don't let you have hoops. Um, you know, he goes out and plays with friends during the day, rides his bike and such. But Oh, awesome. In, in, in the evening... Um, you know, he kind of he kind of gets bored, but we kind of have this routine. You know, he could play for a couple hours, and he learned instead of playing right up until bed, he'll he'll spend the last like thirty minutes reading a book before oh, he gets to bed. Good man, um, good man. 
So my my daughter's my daughter has no issues reading. She's she's a big nerd. She's going to GalaxyCon here in Richmond uh, next week. Um, You're all over the place, she's, brother. Paranormal yep. law enforcement, husband, father of two, Jesus Christ podcast. You could have your own podcast. Your knowledge and your speaking skills, you could have your own true crime podcast all fucking day. Not to be bragging, but you could. I'd support that. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot of work to put in. Um, it's a, a it's lot of times I probably, man. I wouldn't know what subject to cover. Sometimes I don't even know what to make for supper. Um <laughs> Uh, we're talking to Brandon Golding, um, very, very cool dude, big supporter of the show. And uh, Brandon's on a paranormal team with his wife, correct? What's the name of the team? Where can they find people? Uh, you? Um, Viper, we do our own little husband and wife thing, uh, VIPR on Facebook. Um, it's not really in depth. Um, and then we we do investigations with with PRS um, when when we can when we can travel. Um, we we made a lot of friends with with some of the other members um that you know we're going to, to west virginia at the end of the month you know so it's kind of a cool little you know the the other girls that were there at paracon helping were, were part of prs so you know we've kind of come uh into like a little family um so we we enjoy going with them too um but you know the the local stuff just like in our immediate area um is the the viper page vipr uh the logo is a little needs a little work uh i did the logo myself um using paint i don't i don't have any i don't have any uh luxurious uh programs to, to design ross. logos ross, guys. happy little bush it's not bobby ross give me some slack <laughs> but uh i mean I'm, I'm not bad at drawing but i, I used paint and of course you know I, I see all the little errors and i'm like yeah, it's, it's a temporary thing i'll try to make one better um that's never kind of your own biggest issue. critic brother but you're, all, you're your own biggest critic brother that's well I mean. art usually when you do anything art usually artists are their biggest uh critics that's um fair. That's fair. Some, someone, you know, everyone else may think it looks awesome, and you're sitting there pointing out every little detail that you made a mistake on. Um, <laughs> of course, you know, the, those are the ones that are passionate about what they do. So, you know, they try to they try to correct those mistakes. But that's that's usually how it works. I, I look at anything I draw. I don't draw often, but whenever I do, I just kind of look at it and say, "Well, uh, it kind of sucks." So. <laughs> Oh man, Brandon Golden, comedian too, and 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 fucking life spiritualist. All right, man, minute and a half to go. They're gonna kick me out. Tell wifey I said thanks for coming on. Give her a hug for. Well, we'll get you guys on in a month. We'll get you on the flyer. Make it official the whole nine. Get you guys sit down and talk. Um, good man. I mean, it's been a pleasure because every time I see you in chat, you always get a little wise ass comment, kissing my ass, making fun of me, giving me some stars and some love and uh, great knowledge like always. So thank you for coming on, saving me. I feel like I was drowning. No man, I, I told you a long time ago. If you ever needed just someone to 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 share some stuff with, man, I was I was available. So it was my pleasure, brother. I pulled that card, brother. All you right, did. Man. Thirty seconds ago, guys, check out Brandon Golding. Don't give him no shit because he'll put you in a headlock and I'll fucking nut kick you. But he's I'm too old for that. He's too old for that. Um, but you know, like I said, he's got his pages. Check them out. This will be on the YouTube channel tomorrow. Historically haunted. He's going to share his links with me. Check out historically haunted vodcast page on Facebook. I'm going to share those links tomorrow after he sends them to me tonight. And my, I get sober in the morning. I'm, I'm going to bed after this. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week with the guest is uh, I don't know. Tune in. Love you guys. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Thanks.